Hey, welcome to Redemption Metagaming, where you listen to Alex ramble about redemption while he drives home from work because he's too lazy to figure out how to video edit. And also because I don't really have a, a computer that works for video editing. I only have a Chromebook right now. Uh, I know it doesn't work for Lackey, so I actually have a work computer too, but it's super old and it's terrible and it'll never be able to video edit. Uh, but I think it can play Lackey, so that's kind of cool. Um, I just wanted to have a quick conversation. Um, there's some really interesting conversation happening on uh, the, some of the Redemption Discord channels today. Uh, I want to particularly draw some attention to the Zerubbabel's Temple. Zerubbabel, that's just a great word. Zerubbabel's Temple Discord. Uh, there's been some good conversation just around cost systems in Redemption, um, design philosophy, uh, I kind of started by asking some questions about negate versus instead as a general game design rule. Uh, so some really interesting conversation from uh, Tyler Stevens and from Jared Strauss in particular that I remember. Um, I would highly recommend you guys check that out. Uh, wanted to kind of touch base a little bit on kind of my, we'll say what I enjoy, I guess, about gaming and why, why I'm pushing for what you know, the position that I'm holding. Uh, in the thread where I'm kind of talking to Jared a little bit about the resource system of Redemption, uh, I mentioned I'd like Redemption to move to more of a chess type system versus a war game system. Uh, and what I'm, I want to unpack a little bit what I mean by that. Uh, so what I'm talking about from when I say a chess based system is chess is a game that has a finite amount of resources and defined interactions, whereas war is a game with theoretically unlimited resources to some extent, uh, and it has, while it has defined interactions, um, there's uh, some like very, very, um, how do I say this? Very inflexible interactions is maybe a better way to think about it, a better wordy choice. So I'm kind of doing this off the cuff, so I'm not having my, my perfect words all planned out, y'all. Uh, so what I really see as a problem uh, with Redemption as a whole, uh, this is very true when I played actively, and from what I can tell seems to be true still, is the battle phase is designed to be one of the primary places where you're doing things in Redemption, but it's almost always the most wasteful place where you're doing things. And what I mean by that is you can get negated, you can get interrupted, you could have been prevented. And so a lot of times the resources that you're allocating to the battle phase aren't always effective. Whereas uh, if I play a territory class enhancement, just as an example, it's almost always effective. Or at least what I was playing, I think three woes might, might change that up a little bit. But um, things that are placed into territory are artifacts, etc. They're almost always effective in what they're trying to do. Uh, and so because of that, like they're ultimately more valuable and more consistent. Um, and this is kind of exacerbated by the fact that card drawing is so important in Redemption. Uh, I mean, it's, it's important in any card game. Obviously, if you have a card advantage, you're more likely to win. But uh, it also... I think it's a little bit more prevalent in Redemption because of this costless system. Like I can just throw down whatever characters I draw, uh, whether it's Moses or whether it's a 2-2, no special ability. Uh, so it creates this really interesting dynamic where <laughs> in a lot of ways, some battles, especially as we've moved away from kind of cannot be negated phrasing, which when I was playing Redemption, cannot be negated was a, a blight upon the game. Like I, I can't, even describe to you how bad cannot be negated was for a time where you would just slap the four best cannot be negated battle winners together try to figure out how to get initiative and you just drop them um, that type of strategy where like you know so I think there's been a, a very concerted effort to move away from that uh, and, and those types of things in the, the state of rotation from what I've seen but I think kind of the the result of that and this is definitely an unintended consequence uh, in my view, has been that the battle phase, again, from the outside looking in and kind of seeing people talk about the battle phase and, and kind of, um, you know, some of the blights that you guys are experiencing in the game, like Matthew, 
Uh, I think what's really happening is you're just playing war with each other. And, and what I mean by that is you're just slapping down cards and whoever has the most cards happens to win the battle uh, because it's just negate, 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 or um, you know, battle winner, interrupt and battle win instead, and then uh, negate and the dominant. And so you're kind of, in some ways you're almost just slapjacking each other with, with cards. So obviously just whoever has the bigger hand has a much better chance of winning. Uh, and I know that's a, it's a huge oversimplification. I'm not, I'm not trying to say that that happens all the time, but I hope, I hope when I say it like that, you kind of understand where I'm coming from when I say, um, it's kind of just a game of war where, you know, you slap down your two of spades versus the ace. Okay. The ace wins. Here we go. And then you got, Oh, it's a king and a king. It's a tie. So let's get our next card. It's a three and a three tie. You just keep going to keep going. Um, you're just kind of slapping down resources and then eventually it's just attrition. Um, it's not necessarily any type of strategy or skill. It could be, it could be related to that. Certainly in redemption, it is related to that. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, it's very attrition based as opposed to, um, we'll say strategy based. And, and that really exacerbates the card advantage that certain cards will give you when you, you know, Matthew draws six cards, that's six more cards you have to, to just out attrition your opponent. <coughs> Uh, and I consider that a negative play experience. I know I might not be in the uh, majority when I say that, but I find having three bat enhancements played in one battle to be a negative play experience where I'm getting negated the here, there, everywhere. Um, it makes me feel like I've just wasted a lot of resources and time. And I get that that's a part of the game. Like I'm not saying that this should necessarily go away, but to me, I have a negative play experience in the battle phase. Even if I win the battle, I'm just like, this just wasn't fun. Uh, you know, what I enjoy more and what I think is healthier for the competitive meta overall is the idea of developing a chess based game. And this, you know, this is a game where uh, maybe you can put some pieces in place and you know, you're not just because you have uh, the queen doesn't mean you're gonna win But you have some lines of play that you can follow with the queen and you have some strategies you can implement with the queen uh, You know, even though you've lost a resource or two more than your opponent It doesn't necessarily mean you lose the game uh, You know, it means there's things to be played to play around, you know, there's not there's some level of attrition uh, between pieces where maybe you do pawn trading or things like that and you strategically uh, lose something to get another resource away from an opponent and kind of move them into a different position. Uh, but you're not forced to just out attrition your opponent necessarily. There's uh, you know some interplay that can occur. And where where I kind of see this happening in redemption is through um, you know territory class characters, enhancements, fortresses, artifacts, sites, um, even lost souls, heroes in territory, those types of things. Uh, set aside cards. I don't know if that's really still a thing from what I've seen. I haven't really seen any set aside cards when I've been glossing through stuff. <coughs> uh, you know, even reserve, I think, plays into this a lot where, like, you're able to use a chess element there where, like, okay, this card's only going to be good in two or three matchups of the ten I expect to see, so I'm going to reserve it instead of putting it in my main deck. Um, you know, all of those are deeper strategic decisions that uh, allow you to influence your strategy and then the tactics of an individual game. Um, and that's the kind of game I enjoy playing. Like I, one of my favorite parts about playing the deck that I played at the last couple of years of my production career was that there was a lot of looking at, at hands. And so I had a lot of ability to try to make the best decision possible or to try to solve uh, the what my rescue attempt should be for this particular turn. Uh, and I found that to be really intellectually stimulating and really satisfying whenever you were successful. Um, you know, you, it brought, I think some people might say it was very like cold and irrational in some ways where, you know, you'd look at a hand, okay, like this is my rescue attempt. It's, uh, you know, Simeon, Angel of the Oak, Moses, they got nothing to stop that again. But, um, you know, I think there was something very satisfying about looking at a hand and looking at a territory and having to think through your options, you know. Or, you know, recognizing that, okay, actually my best option here is, <coughs> uh, excuse me, uh, I'm going to go out with Angel Under the Oak by himself. I'm going to draw two, and then I'm going to identify, based on the two cards I drew, which judge in my deck I want to make a swap with. Whether that might, it might be Moses, but it might be Gideon if I'm able to hit the Samuel's Edict that I'm shooting for uh, to get the, get through, you know, that this 
unexpected character that I found in a hand, that type of thing. Uh, and I just find that type of gameplay to be a lot more satisfying than trying to accumulate resources to uh, try to attrition my opponent. Um, and I think territory class enhancements and characters have a lot of room to thrive in that. Um, and again, I, I was not here for, for what sounds like some very uh, toxic type of formats with territory class enhancements in the last couple of years. Um, but whenever they were first coming out, it seemed to me like they were primarily being used to try to build consistency into decks, uh, which is probably why it led to some, some negative outcomes. <coughs> uh, but again, like I think those are, those are things that uh, the game needs. You know, the game needs some levels of consistency uh, from these territory class or like we'll call them preparation phase cards uh, instead of all being battle phase cards. Uh, you know, that's, on some level, uh, if we're playing a, a resource accumulation game, the game is always going to be slanted towards uh, heroes, towards good enhancements. Because if I'm playing my turn, my hand can be above eight cards. Uh, if you're playing on my turn, it's very hard for you to get your, your hand above eight cards. So the attacker is almost always going to have additional resources that uh, a defender is not going to have. And so I think if we're talking about some of the imbalance in deck building, where you know it, it makes significantly more sense to play 12 heroes than to tw play 12 evil characters... Uh, you know, there's a game design element to that, but there's also just a resource element to that where uh, it's a lot easier for me and me and my hand to beat you whenever I can have more cards than you because it's my turn. Uh, it's always going to slant that in, in terms of heroes, and at some point there becomes some diminishing returns where it's like, why am I going to keep putting evil characters when I'm always going to be fighting an uphill battle? When I'm always going to be at a disadvantage because it's your turn and I'm having to play cards on on your turn to uh, distract and deflect your rescue attempts. Uh, so this is a lot of rambling. I hope that some of that made sense to you. I hope I got my point across. Um, I think these are really interesting and important discussions. Um, they're not necessarily exclusive to redemption, although that's the kind of the terminology that we are using. Uh, you know, these are important <coughs> distinctions for any game to be making. Uh, and any design elements to be considering. Um, and I would just encourage, I would encourage everyone to kind of start to think about some of these things because they'll impact your, your ability to recognize how to build good decks, uh, how to find good cards, uh, and how to exploit the way that the meta is moving. Uh, as always, you need to like, comment, and subscribe because I need to be, have my ego assuaged, as they say, to continue making videos and content for you. Actually, I'm making content for myself. I didn't even post my last video onto the uh, Discord, so half of you probably don't even know it's there. Um, I'm just making content because I missed it. Um, I spent, you know, probably like 10, 12 hours watching some of my old content. Um, and it's just fun. It's just fun to, to ramble and to talk, to put these things onto YouTube, uh, to share my thoughts. I'm very opinionated, which is kind of who I am. Uh, and there's something fun about sharing that in such a passionate and uh, engaging community as Redemption has. So thanks for all the uh, comments I have seen and for the kind words of Red Wing. I'll, I'll call him out in particular, which ironically, there's a Red Wing in another Discord that I'm also in that I keep getting you confused with. I know who you are, but it's just weird to go into this other Discord for Pokemon that I'm in and see someone named Red Wing. I'm like, wait, which Discord am I in? Am I in Redemption or am I in this this Pokemon Yellow Discord? Um, so that was that's weird, but that's all. That's a whole other thing. So have a great day, guys. I hope to see you soon.